Okay, so this tutorial is on the deep and intermediate muscles of the back. It kind of follows on from the tutorial on the superficial muscles, the extrinsic muscles of the back. So hopefully you should have sh should have watched that before going on to watching this one. Um, but the intermediate muscles of the back are those muscles which attach to the ribs and are involved in respiratory function. And the deep muscles of the back are uh, also known as the intrinsic muscles because they uh, have their embryo embryological development in the back. And these muscles are innervated by posterior rami of spinal nerves and they are involved in moving the spine and head. So I'll just talk first about the intermediate muscles. So just removing the extrinsic muscles here, which you should all know by now. Okay, so got rid of those. Those were the extrinsic muscles that I got just got rid of. So here we have the intermediate muscles, and there are only two muscles that you need to know, um, and they are the serratus posterior superior and the serratus posterior inferior. We'll just take a look at those. So it's that one, and we've got one, the serratus posterior inferior. So those are the in uh, the intermediate muscles of the back. And as you can see, they're attached to the ribs here, and they originate from the spinous processes. So they elevate and depress the ribs. The superior um, serratus posterior elevates the ribs, and the serratus posterior inferior depresses the ribs, which is quite logical. Okay, so next we have the um, deep muscles of the back. So we've gone from the extrinsic muscles down to the intermediate muscles and now we're moving on to the deep muscles of the back. So I'll just get rid of these intermediate back muscles and underneath we have the intrinsic muscles. So like I said before, these muscles are in innervated by the posterior rami of spinal nerves um, and these muscles extend from the pelvis uh, right up to the skull. Um, and they have their development, they develop in the back. Um, so these muscles are involved with moving the vertebral column and in moving the head and neck. The muscles which are involved with moving the head and neck are called the spinotransversalis muscles. And you've got two spinotransversalis muscles, the splenius capitis and the splenius cervicus, which for some reason is not shown on this model. Um, but the splenius capitis here is this big muscle. So I'll just click that so you can have a look at look at it a bit clearly. So the splenius capitis originates here and inserts onto the skull. So again trying to just imagine what function this has. If if I just tilt it here you can see that if this muscle contracts the skull is drawn backwards so the neck is extended and that's if they're both acting together. So if they're both acting together the neck is extended and the head is drawn backwards. If um, one muscle, if, if the spinous capitis individually contracts then you can see that the head will be rotated round to one side. So together the splenius capitis will draw the head back and extend the neck and if they are if it contracts individually it will just rotate the mus rotate the head round to one side. So the two tra spino transversales muscles are the splenius capitis, which is these two muscles here, and the splenius cervicus, which isn't shown on this um, model for some reason, but it, it originates just below the splenius capitis and inserts onto the transverse process of the um, of vertebra C1. Okay. So those were the those two muscles move the head and neck. And next I'm going to talk about the erector spina muscles. Um, so you've got these muscles which move the vertebral column and 
you've got the rectus spinae and the transverso spinalis muscles. So first I'll talk about the erector spinae because they're more superficial and then I'll move on to the transverso spinalis muscles which lie underneath the erector spinae spinae muscles however you pronounce it. Um, so the erector spinae muscles are the largest group of muscles in the back, intrinsic muscles in the back um, and they are primary extensors of the vertebral column and head. So you've got I'll just highlight these muscles so you can see them a bit more clearly. So these are the erector spinae. Just bring it in to view a bit better. So you've got three groups of muscles here. You've got the iliocostalis, which is most lateral, the longissimus, and then you've got the spinalis, which is most medial. So you've got those three muscles the iliocostalis, the longissimus, and the spinalis. And they all have, um, they attach at diff all, all these different regions of the vertebral column. So one way of remembering the, um, the erector spinae muscles, you've got the mnemonic I long for spinach. So iliocostalis lateral, longissimus me um, in between the two and spinalis most medial so I long for spinach or you could remember it the way I try and remember things so costalis sort of ribs their most lateral spinalis lies right on the spine so more medial and then longissimus lies between the two so those are the erector spina muscles and they um, move the vertebral column, extend the vertebral column. So just the next group of muscles is the transverso spinalis muscles which lie underneath the erector spinae muscles and the reason they're called transverso spinalis, if you watch the tutorial on the um, on the individual features of the vertebra, um, you'll remember the transverse process and the spinous process. And the reason they're called transverse spinalis muscles is because they connect from the transverse process to the sp spinous process. Okay, so the, there are three transverse spinalis muscles. You've got the the most superficial one is the semispinalis. And then you've got the multifidus, and the most deep transverso spinalis muscle are the rotares. So you've got the semispinalis, the multifidus, and the rotares. And those muscles are called the transverso spinalis because they connect from the transverse process to the spinous process. So just to recap over what I've shown you, just quickly go through it. I've shown you the intermediate and intrinsic and deep muscles of the back. So the intermediate muscles, you've got the serratus posterior, superior and inferior and they are involved in elevating and depressing the ribs. You've got the muscles which move the head and neck, the splenius capitis which is shown here and the splenius cerv cervicus which is here but for some reason isn't on this model. And then you've got the erector spinae muscles, so eye long for spinach, or iliocostalis, longissimus and uh, spinalis and then deep to those you've got the transverso spinalis muscles so you've got the semispinalis the multifidus and then you've got the rotaris underneath so that's the intermediate and deep muscles of the back